The battle between Caltrans and many of the Willits community is still ongoing. Caltrans wants to build a freeway through the Little Lake Valley, which is the home of Willits and many a seasoned protester. Those outside of the community, or not engaged in environmental issues, may be asking themselves, who are these people? And since they've said their piece and had it overruled, why don't they shut up and let progress proceed? A young man recently climbed into one of the Caltrans towers and has been encamped there for days, 24 hours each day, in an effort to delay action. The two women you are about to hear from have both been arrested for their efforts to get us to take one more look at what we are allowing to happen. If you want the details of their argument against the project, check out Save Our Little Lake Valley at Facebook or .org. Here, I am only trying to give you a picture of who these people are and why they care, why they continue to come back, why they continue to fight a battle of David and Goliath, a battle that seems unwinnable. Um, first, I really want to thank all of you for being willing to be on the board. I've been on boards that don't have nearly as much responsibility as all of you have, and I know it can be sometimes a thankless job and lots and lots of work, lots of time for not very much compensation. I mean, it's basically just a token that you get. Um, and uh, I, I do, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. I'm not willing to do it myself. I also believe that you um, really, that you really believe, or at least you did when you signed the letter to Caltrans, that it was good for Brook Trails. Now, you may or may not have changed your mind, but I, I believe that you have Brook Trails' interest in mind when you made that decision. If you still favor the bypass, you still think it's a good idea for Brook Trails and for Willits. Um, what if you're wrong? What if the bypass is the economic and environmental disaster that many of us think it will be? What I suggest is that you adopt the precautionary principle, which I think simply put is this is my paraphrasing, but when in question, adopt a plan that has the least risk of causing harm to the public or to the environment. No matter how far you've traveled down the wrong path, it's never too late to turn back. Turn and thank you for listening. I live in Spring Creek. I've lived here for 36, 37 years. Um, I also live in Humboldt County in the Matoll where um, <coughs> it's another valley. Uh, and I'm actually back here to um, address this problem that I feel is threatening the valley, the valley that I love, that I've lived near, that I raised my kids near uh, for all this time. You've heard so many <coughs> arguments against the bypass. Um, I don't know what else really can be said and so I don't want to talk about the reasons I'm against the bypass. I think everyone here has covered them very well. In fact, there's so many reasons that you could just kind of take your pick. Um, but I think there's something else going on here. And I want to talk about a, a different endangered species, not the coho, not some of the migratory birds, uh, but ourselves. We're in danger too yeah. because we know that as those threatened and endangered species go, so go we. The planet's finite. Um, one of the things that we can do, however, is think. Think about it and take in new information. So I wonder, you know, in some of my more skeptical moments, I feel like, um, oh, you know, they're just going to do it. They're just going to do it. We're just going to be that blind. We're just going to be that set in our ways. We're not going to be able to make this change that I think we all feel we need to make. Just don't know where to start and how to do it. So in many ways, I feel that we have a great opportunity to use our brains, to use our information and our knowledge 
and to make the right decision, even if it involves some loss of pride, some admission that we didn't know, everything that we do know now. <clears throat> so really the greatest danger I think that we have, that we face is, is denial. The inability to take in new information and make the changes that we need to make. I'd like to think that people here in this valley, in this region, have shown already that we can do that. We can take in new information. We can change our hearts and minds. We did it with timber, do you remember? With the forest issues. Remember how we fought each other? Remember the media wars? Remember the arrests? Remember the deaths? I remember it well. I'd like to apply the lessons that we learned then. We didn't save every tree. We still haven't banned the cutting of old growth redwood. But we have changed our policies and our thinking. We know about sustainable forestry now. We know about the importance of the water and how it's connected to the land and the trees. Why would we let go of that information? Why would we not apply it to the situation we're in now? We can find a better way. We have found a better way. And we need to do it again now. We need to be part of the change. If there's a way to save our species and a way to save the earth, it has to start right here. This is an opportunity to do that. And I hope that we'll rise to that occasion. And that we'll see that it's possible to get through town without destroying a watershed. And we'll have so many other benefits from that, from the change, from making that change, from the shift that will occur when we actually start to practice sustainability, we start to value and actually make our actions match our values. So that's what I'm asking of the board, to represent that new way of thinking, to have the courage to make the shift, to, make, to, to admit that maybe we were wrong, maybe we didn't know to take in that new information and come out with a new paradigm so we can go on here together and we'll solve our traffic, our traffic problems. I've got some ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before I say what I plan to say, I just want to mention that the next time you go to an old growth redwood grove or admire old growth trees that are still standing, think of Naomi Wagner who just stood here because she was one of the great heroic figures of that entire era. So thank you, Naomi. I wonder if you even understand why we keep coming here about your letter. And it's because contingents of representatives of our, of our point of view have gone to Sacramento, and we've spoken to legislators, and we've made, you know, we've made presentations, and they all say, wow, you have a really good point. This looks like a disastrous project. What about your local government? And we go, board of soups, three to two, two to three, brook trails, unanimously four, um, city council, you know, well, not unanimously, because he wasn't, he changed your, thank you, Mr. Santos, thank you so much. But, so, we're stuck with, it's hard for Wesley Chesbrough, for Noreen Evans, for any, Huffman, any of them to say, well, we think this is a bad idea when their local governments seem to support it. So that's why we're here. That's really why we're here. That's why your letter means something to us. That is it. Okay. If you went against it, that would, as soon as you voted for that, you know what happened? It showed up on Caltrans' website. When the Board of Soups were three to two, they went and said, Dan Hamburg, because he's the chair of the board, um, of the supervisor, Board of Soups, um, is for this. And he wrote to them and said, wait a minute, I voted against it. Yes, Board of Soups were three to two in support. 
but I was against it. Why did you put my name up there? So they are ready. They, they want. They're going to try to get the same thing from Ukiah and Fort Bragg. We're hoping that these, or these groups will come forward and say, no, we're not in support of that. So that's why we're here. That's why we care, really. Now, when was the vote of City of Willis Council? <coughs> Well, that's a long conversation. Yeah. We never, I don't think there was ever like a support. It's just that all of the concerns have never been adopted by the city council. It's been three to two, three to two, three to two. Freddie, if a vote were taken now, it would probably be three to two. Yeah, In yeah. Favor I mean, we can't. Yes. Yes. So so and even voted, Bruce, Bruce Burton in the KGO thing, I left my favorite part of the KGO report is at the end, he said, well, I support, you know, he's the, he, you know, as on the board, on the um, city council, I believe that the bypass is a good thing. He said, it's not a perfect project. And I'm thinking 500 million, that's what it will probably be, if the four lanes, $500 million for six plus miles a freeway, it should be a perfect project. So you're, you're talking about bringing up community concerns and the action agenda item is consideration of a letter to Caltrans requesting consideration of community concerns. So that's where we're at, so what we're trying to do I know, but I think you should rescind it. I'm going back to that. I mean, it was not clear at that one meeting. I mean, I think, you're, yeah, I'm sorry. I know that this we is may do something in the future. I think that vote is behind us. I think we, that vote's behind us. We may do something in the future. I mean, if it if it turned out that you know this is Legos, actually, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, Find out. But I think that I, I think, but clearly we're not done with it. Nobody's done with it yet. Thank uh, you. So I so I Thank think. You. You know, I'm sick and tired of you people, but keep <laughs> coming I, anyway. I know. Because there, there will be things. You know, this is my birthday. Do I know how to have a good time? <laughs> I'm 67 years old. Here I am at the wrong. But seriously, you know, I remember having a conversation years ago with a member of the board of, of I think it was the Board of Supervisors in Sonoma County, and they had no staff independent of county employees. And we discussed them having that. So for us, you guys are resource. <clears throat> so keep coming back. Keep Thank talking you. to us. To the extent that things start to go bad, tell us about it. Because this is something that, you know, we can't devote as much time to because of all the other stuff as you can. So hold us to it. After listening to these ladies, you may say, well, they seem like nice enough people. But what about progress? What about the experts supporting Caltrans? The same questions were asked when the same people stood up and suggested that we clean up our rivers, harbors, and bays by not dumping our garbage and sewage into them. Pete Seeger was blackballed for his speaking up on these issues. Many suggested that there was a better way than using DDT to kill insects or defoliants to kill off vegetation competing with logging industry's appetite for fir trees, all to make more money. There were efforts to save some of the old growth redwoods, whales, and many other endangered species. And yes, the battle to save the planet itself from climate change. All of these issues, once thought to be frivolous and much too costly to our way of life, have since become accepted by the public and supported by science. On a more recent issue, Wendy Davis, in a similar effort, stood for 11 hours in defiance of the Republican majority to stop Texas from infringing on women's rights. All of these people have been justified in their efforts over time. Don't write them off too quickly. Bill Moyer once said, Democracy is not something you win or achieve. It is something you get, wake up every morning and fight for. 